I think uh, the story I'm going to share is one that um, is actually coming up. It's something that we are currently observing in our activities. And um, probably I'll name it uh, climate change within alternatives. That's what I'll call it, because it's something that is uh, uh, coming up. I know that um, we are looking at alternatives as we look at the issues of climate change. And uh, in my country, we, the, um, the government is trying to provide financing to alternatives that are caused by climate change. So this is a story that I'm going to give to you. It will be very brief. Um, from one of the farmers. From, the, from one of the farmers that uh, we've got in our activities uh, during the Food and Climate Justice uh, campaign. So we get women's stories, it's part of our programs. Each time we visit new areas, we get stories from women. So this is a story by a woman who stays um, um, along the Mchimla escarpment, if you know Zambia, okay? And in that area, there's a tree that we call Mukula tree. Mukula tree is very common in China because it's being exported uh, largely from, uh, from Zambia. So through alternatives, Zambia has uh, an organization that gives uh, uh, funding to, to climate alternatives. So one of the programs that we have in agriculture is aqua farming. Yeah. So women that are affected by climate change, one of the alternatives was that they go, uh, they do a fish farming. So this woman applied for a loan, being a woman, and those are the, one of the conditions that are uh, on that loan. So she applied to this foundation that gives loans so that she can uh, do fish farming. So this woman goes to this area where there's been a lot of cutting of mukula tree. So she was asked to dig uh, three fish ponds. So she went into her area, she dug three fish ponds, and uh, midway as the season was going on, uh, all the water ran out in the fish ponds. So she ran back to the foundation to go and tell them that uh, she cannot put the fish in the fish ponds after digging them because the water level has gone down. Because there's a lot of tree cutting in that area. Not only for the mkula tree, but also for energy, for the charcoal. To go and sell in the city, because we have blackouts nowadays in Zambia, as we all are aware, the Kariba Dam, that supplies uh, electricity to Zambia and Zimbabwe. The water level is down, so we have a lot of blackouts in Sadiq. Okay, so she rushed back to the foundation to go and uh, ask for, to tell them that she can't put the fish as an alternative source of income. When she went there, they told her that they were going to dig a, a boho for her. Unfortunately, the time they went to dig the boho, she was out at the hospital, she was nursing a, a, a grandchild who was sick. The people from the financing uh, company, they just went on her village and they dug uh, a boho. And um, after digging the boho some 20 meters down, they didn't find the water. When they didn't find the water, they left and they went. After they had left, she came back from the hospital and found that uh, there was no water in the boho. Uh, two months later, the people from the financing company approached her so that she can start repaying back the loan. They even took her to the police. And she had to borrow money to come out of the sales and pay it. And then she rushed to the authorities. They are still on her neck up to now. Now, the other issue is that in the area where she lives, there is a stream which still has water. Unfortunately, she, she stays next to that stream. The water has been diverted to a nearby hospital. So they cannot tap any water from that stream. So I'm looking at uh, climate change within alternatives. What do we do? Because what I'm seeing is that uh, most of these alternatives are still blind to climate change. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much.